G'day Internet and welcome to River City Ransom Underground Underground. My name is Andrew Russell. I'm the lead programmer on River City Ransom Underground and in this series I talk you through some of the technical features in the River City Ransom Underground engine. So, so far on River City Ransom Underground we've been talking about um, a lot of uh, sort of the world features um, of the game, just sort of describing how the world works. For instance, we have the physics system. So you can see here, if I turn on this debug view, you can see here that the physics in the game is represented by these sort of three-dimensional shapes and, you know, this this rectangle that represents a character here. You know, I can move him around. And, and you know, if, he, if I walk him into a wall, you know, he stops. He doesn't sort of go through the wall. And, you know, if I jump him, he'll jump up. And if I, you know, move him down, he'll get pulled down by gravity. Um, so, you know, that's, that's sort of fairly straightforward to at least sort of decide what things should happen. Like, it's fairly obvious that if you walk into something, you know, you'll hit the wall until you, like, slide off and go around it. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of stuff involved there, but it's sort of easy to think about what should happen there. And um, so to give you another example, you know, if you sort of punch someone in the game, you know, it's a fighting game, um, you know, we've draw, drawn all these like masks. So if I, if I do some moves, you can see uh, frame step, whoops, um, here we go. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, frame step through. You can see just here, the um, you know masks. And so if if you if you're hitting someone or kicking someone, it's very simple to just think about what should happen, and that is, um, you know, we just check the pixels of that mask. Do they intersect the pixels of the guy that you're hitting? And if they do, yes, you've hit him. And you know he goes flying across the level, and the physics system takes over. And once he hits a wall, he stops and hits the wall. Um, so. I guess, I guess I'm trying not to understate how much work is involved in the physics system, but the thing is, the AI system is even more complicated because, you know, as a human, you kind of intuit what will happen. You know, you, you intuit that if you kick a guy, he'll go flying, and you intuit, um, you know, where you need to stand and when you need to press the button, and you intuit sort of if I walk into this wall, you know, I get stopped by the wall. And those are all things that we then have to program the computer to sort of have an understanding of or an understanding. Because, I mean, obviously, computers aren't sort of intelligent in the same way humans are. So we basically have to fake it. And so we do. What, what I'll be talking about in this series is a lot of the tricks we use to sort of make it seem like... Um, our, our enemies are acting with some level of intelligence. So let's start. We're going to start talking about the navigation system, which is the underpinning of everything that happens um, in the game. So um, ba basically, basically, we're talking about how do we get the computer to realize that, you know, this is a wall and if you walk into it you get stuck so you have to jump or you have to you know you have to walk around this corner you know how do we how do we teach the computer that and that's kind of a fundamental system because what we want to ultimately do we want to say every everything is built around that so in combat you know you need to say i want to stand here relative to this guy so that i'm punching him at the right time so you need to be a way, have a way to actually get the ai character from one place in the level to the other in sort of an accurate way. And then, you know, you need to get them from like uh, level level exits to their standing positions when they want to run away. They need to be able to get back to the level exit. They need to, you know, they need to be able to jump up here and grab, you know, weapons. So basically everything that the AI does pretty much involves getting from point A to point B. So that's sort of the first core section of the AI. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today and for the next several videos is basically just the navigation systems. So let's talk about that because it's one thing for us to say, say, go here, go there, there's a ledge, there's a ledge, there's a ledge, you know, as humans. Computers 
don't understand, like they don't have an understanding as such of what a ledge is and what a wall is. Um, so we have to sort of build that up from the basis of what they do understand. So let's go over to the blackboard and by blackboard, I mean the whiteboard and by whiteboard, I mean my paint program. And um, let's have a little look at what we do know. So <clears throat> we have a character in the game and um, you might know some of this if you followed along previous episodes about the physics. So you have a character in the game and that character, as you saw before, has this, uh, has this like outline and that represents his sort of physical size as he walks around the level. And then we have the levels made up of like a height map. So, you know, there's a ledge there and there's maybe some floor here and there's a, let's say there's a ledge here. Um, and this is obviously in 2D, but we do it in 3D, but um, same idea. And so this is the area where the guy's standing. And, you know, if he walks this way, he runs into this wall. And if he jumps up here, you know, he could stand, he could stand there. He could stand sort of over the ledge. He can stand down here and so on. So that's, that's one thing we, um, we can tell by looking at asking the physics system, where can a character stand? And the other piece of information we can get from the physics system is sort of where can a character move? So we can, we can say he's standing here. Can he move one pixel that way? And that's kind of how the AI system can be built up. Like rather than thinking about, you know, I want to move here. Can I move there? We have to think about it like, well, I can move one pixel. Can I move another pixel? 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 Um, and so you end up with this like a grid you can form saying, you know, here is a, you know, let's pretend this is a very small level. And, you know, maybe our guy Maybe I, well, yeah, let's say maybe our guy can't stand in some of these pixels, like the ones that I'm coloring in. But what we do know is that he can, say, move between pixels. So if he's, let's say, here, we can say, can he move there? Can he move there? Can he move there? And what we can do is we can build up, oh, a path. So yeah, we can say, you know, he can get to this goal here. Um, another thing I should mention that just cause he, uh, just cause a character can't stand somewhere doesn't mean like, just cause a character can stand say here and this square next to it doesn't mean he can necessarily travel that way. Um, it is possible in the game to end up with, um, situations like that where the two pixels are walkable, but you can't travel between them. Um, and so it's not important why that's the case. It just is. So that's, that's sort of the thing we have. So in the end, we end up with this grid of like, um, you know, every one of these blue lines represents somewhere you can walk. So you can walk here, you can walk here. So you can walk on both of these adjacent pixels, but you can't walk through this wall here um, and so on um, and that forms like a uh, a series of nodes so that forms a graph what's called a graph like node 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 with edges in between and it's sort of arbitrary like these don't have to be pixel aligned as such. Um, and what we can do once we have a graph is we can, you know, we can say path one there. Um, what we do can do once we have a graph is we can use an algorithm that's called uh, a star. And I sort of don't want to go into too much detail about, about how the a star algorithm works because it's covered in a lot of detail in a lot of other places. Um, so what I will show you is someone just made this amazing 
if I can find my window. Amazing tutorial on introduction to ASTAR. So I'm just going to link this. I'll put, I'll put the link in the description. Um, it's by uh, Red Blob Games. So there's a guy called Amit Patel. Amit Patel? Amit Patel, let's say. Um, and he's got a, several um, sort of tutorials, but this one's really good. And it shows you how the algorithm works. Like here's a, here's a destination and here's a starting point and let's find a path through this uh, graph. Like this is a graph. How do we get there? And it explains how it all works. Um, and you know, it explains why it's a good idea. So here's um, Dijkstra's algorithm. And you can see that you know it, it finds a good path, but it um, has to check a lot of squares. Uh, here's greedy best first search, and it finds a um, it finds a path checking sort of very few squares, but you can end up in situations where it like has to turn around a corner and doesn't find the best path. And there's here's a star, and it finds a good path while checking you know fewer squares than Dijkstra's algorithm. So I'll just I'll just leave a link to this in the description because it's sort of a fairly I don't know um, core algorithm that sort of game developers are expected to know because it's like a, a good search algorithm for finding routes through spaces. So yeah, so we can we can search through a pixel grid. Um, the thing is like our pixel grid in the game is too large. It is too large. Like, so I've got one, two, three, four, seven by uh, six um, or so pixels there. That's, that's obviously fairly small. We can search that very quickly, very easily, even with A star, um, which sort of reduces the number of uh, steps it takes to search. They're still too large because our levels are like, so I'm going to use the example here. This, uh, this level um, that I've been using is like my demo level. That level is about 500 pixels by 200 pixels. So it's 200 pixels in the sort of going into the screen and 500 pixels across. So that's uh, 100,000 pixels that you would need to um, run the search on and obviously that takes a lot of time so we need a way to simplify this um, so let's make a new layer and talk about that um, here we go so we know that let's let's draw a fake level let's draw a very simple level we'll maybe have a dead end up here and um, I'm gonna make this fairly simple so it's sort of easy to talk about and you know maybe there's this pole in the middle that you can't walk through so the thing we know about this level is that say we're standing stay say we're standing here Whoa, I like my smiley faces to be quite pretty. So let's do that again. Stay where standing here. We know that we can travel quite a long distance in any direction before we come anywhere near a wall where we might actually care about, you know, stopping or like, you know, we don't really mind so much what path we take around here but we do know that we have to avoid this corner. We don't want to crash into that. So if um, what, what we can do is we can say, well, we can divide the level up into what's known as sectors. So we can say, here's a sector and we know, I'll just, I'll just quickly divvy this level up. So just to give you the example, um, we've got a sector here and then, so I'm sort of doing this roughly. So. To do, and then we have one up here. 
and then one more up in this corner. So what we can say is that within each of these sectors, we don't really care so much where you move because we're not going to run into anything. Um, so we can move freely in this sector, but as soon as we try and leave this sector, we need to know what we're going to hit. So we need to, if we want to get from say here, uh, in the sector, we want to travel to this destination here. Um, what we can say is, you know, we can't just drive straight there because we run into this corner here. Um, and obviously if I drew this further down, you know, if, if he was standing here and wanted to go there, you know, you drive clear on through. So the sectors are kind of a larger system that we can use to figure out um, what's Pathfinder and we can reduce the complexity of the problem. So we know that to get from you know, sector A here to sector B, we need to go A to B and we need to jump in there. If we wanted to go from A to B, if we want to go to C, we can say, well, there's a path that goes that way. There's also a path that goes through D that way. And finally, you know, if we want to get up to Q here, we know that we have to go from here to here. And um, when we search for a path, we don't say, well, you know, we want to go to Q. Well, we could go this way, all the way around there, but we want to find the shortest path. So we, um, we find it that way. So basically the whole point of whole point of doing sectors is so that we're not, you know, trying to pathfind on this huge grid. So as you can see, this, this is like a hundred thousand um, pixels. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six sectors for, you know, maybe this is a couple of hundred pixels in each direction. So it reduces the problem space down until it, basically it becomes performant to um, do that search. So, uh, where are we up to? Oh yes, so let's talk about um, the how, how we divide this up into sectors. So you saw there that I divided my fake level up into sectors by hand. And um, obviously that's kind of error prone because like I could make a mistake um, and there's lots and lots and lots and lots of sectors because you know our levels are a bit more complicated than this and you know if someone say added another poll in here for instance we'd want to recalculate the sectors without having to sit down and delete some sectors and fix some new ones so we want this to be an automated process so we need to sort of figure out what the properties of these sectors are um, and basically the most important one is that they are convex so a convex shape is one that sort of has no any bits. So that's a convex shape. And the opposite is concave. So, you know, cave. Um, and that's a shape that sort of has an any bit. And obviously that's a problem because, you know, if you are, you are say here and you want to get to here, um, you know, you crash into the wall as you go, whereas any point in a convex shape, you can get to any other point in a convex shape without ever hitting the edge. So convex is good and concave is not so good, at least for us. So if we had a concave shape, it's the sort of thing we want to you know, divide it up like that. And then suddenly we have one, Two. We can, that's the other thing is we can go from convey, concave to convex by just dividing concave shapes up. So um, let's talk about how we do that. Because, um, you know, as, as I said, we want to automate this process. Um, okay. So let me, yeah, so we... And, and yeah, as, as we automate this process, we need to consider, um, drawing on the correct layer, we need to consider this uh, pixel grid system here. So we need to consider where we can move, um, you know, what, what pixels are connected um, as we sort of basically connect up a series of pixels until it's, um, 
until it's a larger shape, as large as we can get it, or at least fairly large. You know, um, like this, like I said, this has wrong layer. Somehow, somehow, I'll come up with a way to change that. Um, you know, this has six sectors. It wouldn't really be a big deal for us if this had, if, you know, our automated process came out with 12 sectors. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, like a, 2x doubling, um, well, yeah, this is 2x, um, but it's still much, much, much smaller than 100,000, um, 100,000 sort of pixels, which well, sectors, which are one pixel big. So, you know, it's still a massive improvement. So let's talk about how we do the automated divvying up process. And it's basically a um, flood fill. Um, so I'm going to draw out sort of a shape that I have thought about very carefully before this video that should demonstrate sort of a lot of the features that we have to think about to get um, to get our convex thing, so this dividing up process. So what we do is we find a pixel that um, that we haven't touched yet. Let me just check the thing. Yeah, so we look at this and we start at the bottom because that's sort of how our levels are laid out in memory. We start here and we say, right. Actually, you know what? I'm going to slightly change this diagram because uh, It leads to a more interesting thing to talk about. So we look at our we look at our level and we pick the lowest point. We pick the sort of first point to look at, and we expand out to the right. So every time we do an expansion, we're like looking at the pixel here, and we say, "Can we move to the next pixel?" And if we can, we keep expanding until we hit this point here. You know, can we expand? Yes. Can we expand? Yes. And then we we hit a wall where we can't expand any further and we stop. We then also expand to the right and we notice that we're right next to the wall because that's what we started with. So we stop there. Then we move up a row. So what this looks like is we go up, 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 up. And we're looking every time we do this, I'll draw this in a different color. So you know, we can connect there. We're looking up, 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 up. Can we move the whole existing row upwards? Um, and you know, how much by? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's one pixel, but how, how many pixels in that row we can move up? And in this case, it's all of the pixels we can move upwards. Then we do our, we do our expansion again. So we've gone up, we expand to the right, and we expand to the left, and we fill in that row. And what this looks like is, you know, we're checking, we check connectivity here after we go up, and then we expand here, and oh, look, we can expand there because this is slightly wider on this row than it was on the previous row because, you know, that pixel there was filled in. So expanding upwards, and then we repeat the process like so. And then we get to this interesting point here. And we notice if we expand that way, we come to a section where um, if we would expand it, we'd then be able to drop down. And we kind of don't want that because we know that if we're dropping down, it means we have sort of, we have, we have a pixel here and a pixel here. And obviously that forms, you know, a convex shape. So you can't get from there to there without crossing walls. So what we do then we say, right, well, we're going to stop expanding at this point. We're going to say, yep, that's as far as we're going to go. Because we know that when we come along later, we'll actually collect these pixels in a separate sector. So we we stop. We you know we just erase that tiny bit, and we say that is now the limit of our expansion. Um, we're not going to go further than that. So we keep going up and up. We go up again and we expand. And what we're tracking on, as well as like here's the limit. So we've got a limit uh, there. 
we're also tracking um, the sort of angle of the side. So we can tell as we go up how, you know, how much here did we go in or out by. So, you know, we can go, we can go um, nothing. So nothing, we can go sort of out that way. I guess nothing is kind of like straight up. Uh, we can go up, we can go in. And what we know is when we get to this point here, we want to expand out again that way. In fact, what we really want is we want to we want to have that edge expand sort of stair step up, stair step up. We know that that would generate, you know, another one of these um, situations where you have a pixel and like that, like this, and you know that you can't have, you can't go from here to here without crossing a wall. So you know that these two pixels here can't be in the same sector. So at this point we say, right, well, you know, we've got this one here, we've got this one here. We're just going to say, no, we're going to cancel that line. We're going to erase it. Um, you know, if we went too high, we'll just go, or say, we're not going to count that one anymore. And we'll wait for it to get that in the next pixel. So then that sector, you know, we can't go any higher. So we say, right, that's done there. And then we pick, we start again. We pick the lowest point on the um, thing, which will be there, and we start doing this. And because we know we have already visited these pixels here, like uh, the red ones, we know not to expand into there with our sector because we've already got, um, we've already covered it. So then we get up to here and the same thing happens. You know, we've gone straight up, we've gone in, we keep track of that. We know that we can't then go out. So we stop with that sector. Then we have another sector and we start expanding out. We come all the way across there because just so happens that the way I've drawn this is that they stopped at the same point. And, you know, later on, when we look at how this looks in the um, editor, you'll see that our sectors are shaped very much like this. So you can sort of see that that's the kind of shape that gets generated. So what happens is, you know, we're filling out to the side and we get up to a point, you know, we're filling up and so on. Um, so it doesn't matter what happens there. We're filling up to here and we hit a like sticky down bit in the middle. And what happens is we go up, we go up, we go up, we go up, we look here and we try and go up and we say, it can't go up. So we cancel this whole row. And we say, right, we stop there. And then finally, using the same process, we make a sector here. And we fill in a sector here. And that is basically the process we use to divide, you know, the uh, level up into sectors A, B, C, D, E. Um, so, now I've explained all that, and I know I know it's a long explanation because you know it's a fairly complicated system. Let me show you that in some of our testing apps. So I'll start with the prototype. So these are the ones that I um, made when I was sort of experimenting with this system to sort of figure out how it would work and testing that everything works as expected and it makes nice sectors. Um, and you can see um, it divides up, you know, even complex shapes into convex uh, sectors that are fairly nicely shaped. Um, uh, let me see. So you can see it says drop a bitmap. So I've got a couple of other um, bitmaps that sort of test out the the um, generation and sort of other ways. So uh, this this is this this one actually, and to a certain extent this one, uh, just for a really simple case. And this one, uh, which I went online and got a, like, this is, this is the image that I'm dragging on. And then this is the other image I'm dragging on. And then finally, this is the original image that I'm dragging on that it divides up into sectors. So I, you know, got a, I went online and found a, you know, generator maze um, thing online and just got an image from that. And then this one's supposed to 
uh, represent sort of a really complicated level with lots of twists and turns. So the idea of this one and this one is more to sort out the pathfinding that I'll talk about in the next level. But this one was the first one, and this is sort of to make sure that the sector generation dealt with a whole lot of um, sort of interesting cases. So you can see that you know it deals with like different um, different angles on here. You'll notice that this is not this shape here is not strictly um, strictly convex, and that is because our um, our system where did it go? Our system for generating uh, generating these things sort of has some understanding of what uh, the character is capable of. So we know that you know if a character comes up here, he's moving up, he'll actually slide along that wall, and we're okay with that. Um, so we can have small amounts of convexness in here when it, when we know that it's not going to matter due to the way our characters walk. But you can see, you know, I'm testing a lot of different sort of edge shapes along here. I'm testing, um, if I go up here, you know, here's, here's an edge that goes up with a one pixel stair step and here's a two pixel stair step. And we're just checking that works in various orientations and on various sides. Um, here we're checking it deals with like holes in the level and here. Um, and over here we're checking, you know, that it can deal with one pixel wide sections of the level. So basically making sure that the sector generation is really robust um, and can deal with a whole lot of cases. So that's that was like the initial version of the sector generation generator. Um, and then I have the same thing. I'm gonna have to go find a level. Um, then we have uh, that, that one level. There we go. Um, so I'm gonna find a level. Um, um, um. Here we go. So this is the same level that I use in um, in the uh, <clears throat> in the, the usual this is like my usual testing level. You can see uh, it's three dimensions now, so I can turn flat mode on and off. Um, so you can see there's the there's the level physics and there's the generated sectors. And if I sort of squash those down, you end up with this. So if I I can you know squash down the thing and turn that back off and you can see the sectors. Um, and you can tell that uh, what I said before is quite important about how you can have, um, <coughs> so you can have a pixel, you know, um, like this pixel might be walkable and this pixel might be walkable, but you can't directly get between the two because for instance, it might be a ledge. So you might have to jump up there and we'll talk about that in a later video um, about that. But yeah, so you can have adjacent pixels that are in different uh, sectors, even though they're both uh, walkable and you'd think they'd be um, convex, but you still have to account for the fact you can uh, jump. Yeah, some, some of the edges are jumps basically or drops. So yeah, so that's, this is it in um, in the prototype. So I've just dragged a sector, uh, sorry, a level onto this prototype, and it's generated a whole bunch of sectors. And you can tell I'll, I'll move the I'll move the camera around because it resets the camera every time I drop it on. And you can tell that it takes just like I don't know half a second or so to generate that. Um, generate that sector map. So that's generating it every time I load up the level. Um, so this is a process that we do when we, uh, basically when we save the level. So it's not so fast we have to, I mean, sorry, it's not so slow that we have to have a specific regenerate the navigation thing. You know, we're just like, well, saving just takes a quarter of a second. Um, but we do have to do that in the level editor uh, rather than doing it at runtime in the game um, because it does take a little while. So finally, I will show you exactly the same level. Here's the running game, and I will turn on the um, navigation map. There we go. So you can see it's exactly the same as what you saw before. So each of these different colored zones is a different sector. Um, and I can turn on uh, flat mode there. It's exactly the same as what you saw before. So that's how we um, generate 
sectors effectively, which is sort of the very basis of all of our spatial queries. We know that once we have a sector, every location in that sector is walkable without having to do any pathfinding or stuff because we know that you can just get from A to B without running into any walls. So that's everything that I'm going to show you in this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about how we actually do the pathfinding between um, between the different sectors, and you know you have to think about how you cross the edges and so, ed edges of sectors and so on. So um, look forward to that one. As usual, let's go over to the web browser. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link to this in the video description because it's quite a quite a great article and it's you know it's fun to play around with these like interactive diagrams that show you sort of how all of these algorithms work. Um, but if you're interested in my videos, you can follow me on my blog at andrewrussell.net where I post uh, the videos when they're done. I I also post them on Twitter. Uh, you know, you can new River City Ransom Underground Underground um, episodes. So I post those on my Twitter. And obviously, if you're on YouTube, you can hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification when I upload a video. So if you're interested in the game, you can follow along at River City Ransom on Twitter and you can see that uh, that account will retweet my videos as well. Uh, you can also follow along on Facebook. Um, there's a banner because I'm not logged in, but um, you know, you can look at the uh, look at the videos on there. Anyway, uh, yes. so. That's it for this episode, and so I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Okay, and now we've hidden OBS. Here we go, stop recording.